The Life of Rintaro Okabe, Steins Gate. Rintaro Okabe, often nicknamed Okarin or Ho in Kyoma, is a self-proclaimed mad scientist and the main protagonist of the Steins Gate series. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Rintaro Okabe. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and follow us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background. He and Itaru are both students of Tokyo Denki University and have been friends for roughly three years, according to his words, although Itaru claims that they've been friends for only just over a year. He's an engineering student. Rintaro founded the Future Gadget Laboratory, a small research institution situated above a CRT store. It's an area where he and his fellow lab members create future gadgets for the betterment of mankind. He dubs himself Lab Member 001 the first to join the lab. Rintaro has an enduring friendship with Shina Mayuri, lab member 002 and co-founder of the Future Gadget Lab, whom he made a vow to protect when they were young. Rintaro lives an average life with his small group of friends until he creates the phone microwave with Itaru. His parents run a family business and he's once again gotten an eggplant for Christmas. The death of Kurisu Makisei. In order to gather additional units for his college course, Rintaro attends a seminar being taught by Shoichi Makisei about the fundamental theory behind creating a time machine. He arrives early and upon entering the room of the lecture, the building is seemingly shaken by an earthquake. He runs upstairs and finds a satellite on the roof of the Akihabara radio tower. As Shoichi begins his seminar, Rintaro, a staunch believer of time machines, recognizes the core material on which the professor speaks and makes a commotion accusing the professor of having plagiarized the idea from John Titor, who spoke of this theory 10 years prior. He's pulled out of the seminar and meets Kurisu Makisei for the first time, though she insists on having seen him just 15 minutes ago. Afterwards, Rintaro talks to Mayuri about her metal upa, which she lost before they hear a scream come from upstairs. Rintaro rushes to the source of the sound to investigate and finds the body of Kurisu Makisei in a pool of blood. Rintaro is shaken by the incident and he contacts his friend Itaru about it through a text message. Immediately after sending the text, the people on the street all disappear, and the satellite he saw earlier appears to have crashed into the roof of the radio tower. He questions Mayuri about the apparent disappearance of the pedestrians, who seems to not have noticed. He later discovers that Itaru received the message, though five days earlier, and it's broken into three messages, and that Shoichi Makisei's lecture was cancelled. While attending a lecture for credits that afternoon, he meets a perfectly unharmed Kurisu Makisei. After that, he was in a state of shock, frequently touching Kurisu, who was then accusing him of sexually harassing her. It was then that he realized that this was the real Kurisu. John Titer and Future Gadget Number 8 Although he was certain that the events that he experienced did happen, he double-checks the occurrences on the internet, coming up with the confirmation of what Itaru has told him. He would soon stumble upon John Titer, a time-traveling character famous for his discussions of the world in the year 2036, and this sparked his interest in knowing more about John Titer and his ideas about time travel. Shortly after agreeing to let Kurisu join his lab, due to her curiosity about the experiment that Okabe and Daru were doing with the phone microwave, Rintaro soon realizes that the phone microwave is actually a time machine. With the help of Kurisu, Rintaro starts doing experiments with the phone microwave using D-mails, CERN, and the IBN 5100. After stumbling upon Moeka, a shy woman that only communicates by her phone on the streets of Akihabara, Rintaro learns about the IBN 5100. Okabe also has Daru hack into CERN to find some info related to the time machine. To his shock, CERN has been researching the time machine and already succeeded in making one. However, CERN did 14 experiments on humans, called the Z-Program, and all humans that have been experimented on have already died and turned into a gel-like state and were found in different places in the past. Daru found an unknown database of CERN which he even couldn't crack. Okabe decided to ask Titer about the code and found out that he needed the IBN 5100 in order to access CERN secrets. Okabe starts searching for it and finds out that Ferris's father once had an IBN 5100 and dedicated it to a shrine. He ultimately finds it at the Yagabashi Shrine and brings it back to the lab. Demails and Reading Steiner Okabe starts doing experiments with the phone microwave by trying to send text messages, which the group agrees to call them demails, to the past. He learns that the experiments only work at a specific time of the day, between 10am to 6pm. 
Also, if the daymails can actually affect the past, then the present will be altered and only Okabe can notice the change, as other members' memories have also been altered to fit the new timeline. He exchanges messages with John Titer and learns about world lines and attractor fields, and also that he has a special ability which he can retain memories from before the world line changes. He decides to call the ability Reading Steiner. Rounders attack. After sending several D-mails, Okabe has changed the world line drastically. Ferris's D-mail has literally remodeled Akihabara, Luca's mail changes him from a boy to a girl, also the IBN 5100 is nowhere to be found due to the change of world line. In the meantime, Kurisu is also working on the Time Loop Machine, a modified version of the phone microwave that can send the user's memory to the past. Also, Okabe has been receiving threat mails from an unknown person, attached with gruesome images. The night of the day Kurisu completes the Time Loop Machine, Mayuri's watch stops, much to her surprise. Soon, a group led by Moeka attacks the lab, killing Mayuri in the process. With the help of Suzuha Amane, Okabe was able to use the Time Leap Machine to travel back through time and save Mayuri. However, no matter how many times he tried, the result doesn't change. Mayuri still dies. It was then that Okabe begins to be terrified of Mayuri's death every time he sees Mayuri's watch stop. Falling into despair, Okabe confronts Kurisu for help. By confronting Suzuha after time leaping, Okabe now learns that Suzuha is, in fact, John Titer. Suzuha travels from the year 2036 to 1975 to obtain the IBN 5100, but stops midway at 2010 to find her father, Beryl Titer, who is currently in Akihabara. Rintaro also learns more about the world line and attractor field, and the future of this alpha world line. CERN will rule the world with a dystopia. Okabe becomes a terrorist leader. Kurisu is the mother of the time machine that enables CERN to complete world domination, and also that he can't save Mayuri due to world line convergence. To save Mayuri, he has to move to another attractor field, and to do that, he needs the IBM 5100 to erase the first email he's ever sent from CERN's database. Rintaro and the other lab members consisting of Kurisu, Mayuri, and Daru agree to help Suzuha to fix the time machine, the machine previously thought to be a satellite lodged in Radio Kaikon's roof, which is currently broken due to the rain few days prior, as well as to find Suzuha's father. Daru succeeds in fixing the time machine, and Mayuri discovers that Suzuha's father is in fact Daru. Although all the lab members seem skeptical about it, Mayuri was able to show some undeniable proof, proving that Daru is the father of Suzuha. Suzuha was very happy. She bid farewell to the lab members and went back to 1975 to obtain the IBN 5100 to give to Okabe. However, because the time machine was incomplete, she can only go back to the past. So if she manages to obtain the IBN 5100, she'll have to wait 35 years to give it to Okabe. Going back to the lab, Okabe receives a letter from Mr. Braun, saying that it's a letter from an old friend of his. Realizing that it's a letter from Suzuha, Okabe crumbles upon reading it. The time machine's repairs were incomplete, causing Suzuha to get amnesia and lose all of her memories when she went back to 1975. When she remembered her purpose for traveling to 1975, it was already too late to secure the IBN 5100. Suzuha fell into despair and committed suicide. Okabe now realizes that he can't obtain the IBN 5100 in this world line. Thus, he sends another D-mail to prevent himself from the past from stopping Suzuha to leave Akihabara before the night of the rain so that Suzuha won't lose her memories when going back to 1975. Of course, doing so would make the other lab members lose their memories regarding the time they shared with Suzuha, except Okabe with his reading Steiner. Retrieving the IBN 5100 after sending the D-mail, Okabe still hasn't escaped the Alpha Attractor field, but because he did change the world line, the rounder's attack and Mayuri's death is delayed by one day. Now he has to cancel all the D-mails he sent in order to retrieve the IBN 5100. After some difficulties, Okabe succeeds to cancel Ferris and Luka's D-mail, which turns Akihabara back to normal, which is a city of Moe culture, and Luka back to a boy, which he was born as. The last email he has to cancel to get back to the world line where he has the IBN 5100 is Moeka's email. With the little information he knows about her, Okabe was able to find Moeka's apartment, but he also finds out that Moeka has committed suicide. Okabe rushes back to the lab to time leap to when Moeka was still alive, but before he could do that, he realizes that someone's using the time leap machine. Unable to find out who that is, Okabe decides to forget about it and time leap. He went to Moeka's apartment to find that she's in some kind of trauma because her boss, FB, seems to have abandoned her. After some struggling, Okabe finally takes the phone from Moeka, and with the help of Kurisu, who was at the lab at the time, he sends a mail to cancel Moeka's email. 
However, nothing happens as he realizes that the world line hasn't changed. His reading Steiner didn't activate, while Moika constantly pounds at the door. Soon he realizes that Moika lied to him about the content of the D-mail. The real content is the location of the IBM 5100. Once again, he sends a D-mail to cancel her D-mail, but still, nothing happens as Moika from the past seemed to ignore the mail and is still searching for the IBM 5100. He then confronts Moika, had another fight with her, and was forced to kiss Moika to silence her. He then gives Moika back her phone and offers to help find FB as he thinks that only FB's mail can cancel Moika's D-mail. After a stakeout in front of a locker in which Moika hid the IBM 5100, Okabe and Moika tailed many people who took the IBM 5100 and spent an all-nighter to find FB, which to their surprise, turns out to be Mr. Brown. After hearing the story from Okabe about Amine Suzuha, Mr. Brown uses his gun to commit suicide. Upon learning the truth, Okabe finally decides to send his D-mail and returns to the world line in which he obtains the IBM 5100. Struggle and Confession Rintaro Okabe, after undoing Moika's D-mail, notices that if he cracked CERN's database and deleted the first D-mail by using the IBM 5100, he'll end up in a world where Kurisu died at Radio Kaikan. Therefore, he refuses hacking CERN to delete the first D-mail. He struggles to find a way to save both Mairi and Kurisu, but all is in vain. When Kurisu asks him why he didn't crack the first email, he tells her the truth about her death. Kurisu doesn't care if she dies and urges him to save Mayuri. Okabe then confesses his love for her. She kisses Okabe, and he demands another one from her after the first kiss. Okabe finally decides to sacrifice Kurisu and return to the original tractor field he was in. Finale now in the original world line, still reeling in devastation after Kurisu's loss, Okabe receives a phone call from Suzuha, who offers to meet him on the roof of Radio Kaikan. When Okabe gets there, Suzuha tells him that they needed to prevent Kurisu's death because it somehow stirs up World War III. However, when they attempt to do this, the operation ends in disaster when Okabe tries to stab the culprit with a knife, but stabs Kurisu instead. The force was so strong that the knife pierced the skin and penetrated the flesh. He was then left with a dying Kurisu in his hands. Kurisu then apologizes for letting Okabe get involved in her murder, before finally collapsing onto him, staining his outfit and filling his soul with grief. After returning to their time, Okabe was devastated, repeatedly saying that I killed Kurisu, and wanting to take an eternal slumber before Mayuri slaps his face. He then awakens from his delusions and then receives a message from himself in the future telling him that the way to save Kurisu without altering the events that led to him developing a time machine is to fool his past self into believing Kurisu had been killed and allowing Mayuri's metal upa to not be detected by the metal detector in the airport and let the files that was stolen by Shoichi Makise burn down in the accident, thus achieving the final divergence value that's larger than 1, 1 1.048596, which he dubs the Steins Gate. His future self dubs this mission as Operation Scold. Rintaro plans on doing this by knocking her out with a taser and using the fake blood in Future Gadget number 6, the lightsaber from Spark Wars, which is obviously a reference to Star Wars, the famous American space opera. When Okabe returns to the past, he obtains the metal upa first before his past self does. Mayuri will instead receive an ordinary green upa, lose it, and have it picked up by Kurisu Makise. Okabe soon realizes that the fake blood he brought dried up. Without much choice, Okabe risks his own life by letting himself get stabbed by Shoichi Makise, and then using his own blood to recreate the scene where he saw Kurisu lying unconscious on a pool of blood, in order to save her. Kurisu witnessed it and called for help, but Okabe then tasers her and leaves her lying in the pool of his blood before saying farewell to Kurisu and talks about his past self. Suzuha calls Okarin stupid for doing that because he risked dying of his injuries and exposing himself to his past self, but Okabe retorts, stating that the mission was successful and he fulfilled all of the objectives, create a fake crime scene with Kurisu bleeding, and fool his past self. Okabe returns to his time. He was hospitalized for about a month due to his wound, and around September 2010, he got out of the hospital, consequently obtaining eight lab mem badges which were just finished. Rintaro visits Yanabayashi Shrine to appoint Luka Urushibara as lab member number 006 and gives him the lab member badge, then visits May Queen to appoint Ferris as lab member number 007 and gives her the badge as well. As he was about to go upstairs to the lab, he finds out that Moeka works as a part-timer in the CRT workshop. He then gives her the lab mem badge and appoints her as lab member 005. Mayuri wasn't around since she was looking for Okabe, who was released from the hospital. He then puts another lab member badge in the box and tells Daru that the eighth member will appear seven years later. And for Daru, it was an inescapable fate. 
Okabe goes back out to the streets of Akihabara, carrying two lab member badges. One is for himself, lab member 001, and the other one is for lab member 004, Kurisu. Okabe reflects that it will never reach its owner since Kurisu in this world line has no memories of three weeks she spent with Okabe in the Alpha world line. A bit saddened by the realization, he walks through a crowd of Akihabara when someone familiar passes by him. He stops and turns around, not really believing what he'd seen. The person turns out to be Kurisu. She smiled thankfully and remarks that she was afraid of never being able to see him again and would forever be unable to thank him for saving her life. Okabe, who becomes too emotional, puts up his Chunibyo act and pulls out his phone. In a slip of the tongue, he calls Kurisu by the nickname he used in other world lines, Christina. Kurisu replies to him by stating that she isn't Christina, nor his assistant. Both were surprised, and Kurisu reveals that she just acted on instinct. Okabe reflects that Kurisu in this world line shouldn't have known about the nicknames he gave her in other world lines. Okabe then welcomes her and appoints her as his assistant once more, before giving her the lab member badge he had. Okabe continues living in the Steinsgate world line happily with both Kurisu and Mayuri safe and sound. OVA Egoistic Poriomania Eight months later, future lab members, with the exception of Moika, goes on a trip to America. However, in a moment of rashness, he travels to a truck stop in the middle of nowhere and was unable to make the return trip with only a dead battery phone and 67 cents. Afterwards, Kurisu came to his rescue, only to be stuck in the same situation as him due to the car running out of fuel. Stuck in the middle of a deserted highway with no one in sight, Okabe then confesses his love to Kurisu. Standing up, Kurisu asks Okabe to close his eyes, as with the other world line, finally completing the choice of Steins Gate. Post Steins Gate, Robotics Notes Dash. Sometime during around 2014, Okabe went abroad and as of 2020, currently resides in America, researching at Victor Kondria University along with Kurisu and Hyajo Maho. Hashida mentions that after Okabe came up with the world line theory, he changed significantly and migrated to study with known geniuses. During that time, Okabe reinvented his divergence meter to watch over his world line. However, what it's revealed recently shows that the Steins Gate is in jeopardy. The meter will display 1.08596 as it should, but occasionally twitches, changes numbers periodically, or glitches. This worries him enough to contact Daru, by which Daru mentions Okabe never goes out of his way to make calls or messages. He relayed one message to Daru before calling him. The world line trembles. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 